Now we do have one more thing. We're really excited. We have done something that you guys have been asking for, I don't know, probably five years or more. Hey YouTube, so it's really exciting this week. We got a great vlog for you and we're super, super pumped because it is Tinley week, which means this weekend we'll be in Chicago at the big Tinley NARBC show, which is absolutely fantastic. We're really looking forward to it. We have such great energy at that show. Um, it's pretty much the biggest and the best, maybe not the biggest, it's definitely the best reptile show in the US where you just have the, the kind of the meeting of the minds and a lot of really cool people show up and we're really excited about it. So make sure you stay tuned all the way to the very end because we have a special, special announcement for the show. We're really excited about this, guys. So for the vlog, we're gonna mash a bunch of things together that we've done this week. We've got a lot going on. We're gonna update you a little bit on how the season's progressing. Um, yeah, you got some information about that. And then, although we're not hatching a ton of stuff right now, we have two really, really cool snakes to show you that recently hatched. Let's get right into it. Hey, good morning, YouTube. So it is um, 6 a.m. Actually, now it's like closer to 7 a.m. now. And I've been driving since 5 a.m. to get down here to the airport. We have a shipment to Puerto Rico. Um, or I drive down here to Delta to put this on the plane, and it'll arrive in Puerto Rico around uh, 4, 3.30 to 4 um, this afternoon, and they will, a customer will have it in their hands um, by 5. Pretty awesome. Pretty, pretty exciting. Um, so a little information about Puerto Rico for um, the viewers there or customers there. It costs about, I charge $175 to ship a box to Puerto Rico and that includes a vet certificate, that includes Delta flight, that includes four hours of my driving, two hours down to the airport, two hours back. So, uh, but I'm happy to do it because we get some awesome animals into Puerto Rico and I've been there, been to some of your shows, it's pretty awesome. Let's go give this to Delta. Alright guys, so here's the lowdown on the season. We just finished the ultrasounding yesterday and you know I never feel completely pumped after ultrasound. I always feel like there's always this mix because you find some girls that you're just super excited about and then you always also find out that some of them are taking the season off or that one thing that you were sure was just going to really develop a lot of follicles since the last time didn't do much. So it's always a mixed bag. But overall, I would give this season, I would say it's starting off a little slow. Um, we've had some good early clutches, some good early ovulations, um, but the mid-season is not shaping up to be the same thing. And I've actually heard this from a couple other breeders. It seems like across the U.S., whatever seems to, it seems to be seasons where it'll be a great season or a, a not so great season. Um, and I'm, from what I'm hearing, this may be kind of a lean season for ball pythons across the U.S. And I think I'm seeing that a little bit in our collection. But I'm not too worried about it. We always have great animals. We have some great females going. In the end, it's never really about the volume to me. I mean, if I could pick the top 25% of my girls to go every year and nothing else did, I'd be just thrilled. That, that, that's all I need. Um, so I think it's going to be a good season, and uh, we'll see how it keeps shaping up. We'll keep bringing you guys along as we get some more great clutches. And uh, we'll let the girls decide, and we'll just be happy with whatever nature gives us.
All right, guys, so we have two snakes to show you. The second one we're gonna do on the whiteboard here. We're gonna check out the genetics of it. But this first one is really, really cool. This is an orange dream, yellow belly, vanilla cream clown. All right, so this is the very first vanilla clown I've made at all, ever. It's, it's something that I always liked that kind of the angle, what vanilla kind of brings to the table, but it just took a long time to get the right pieces kind of put together. And I grew up a pastel vanilla head clown girl and I bred it to an orange dream fire yellow belly clown. So we had a visual OD fire yellow belly clown to pastel vanilla het. And so the, as you guys may know, the vanilla and the fire go together. Um, we call it an ALS, like it acts like super. So they're on the same allele. So even though they don't make a white snake, that together they make a snake that is a combination of the two genes and that's called the vanilla cream. And then this one, we put it into a clown and we've added orange dream and yellow belly, I believe. Look at that belly, it's got a lot of checkering. You know, on all this stuff, I just give it my best opinion and uh, based on how it looks and based on what I've seen. But this is pretty far out beyond anything I've seen and a lot of this stuff, we'll just just give it our best, uh, our best identification and then breed it and find out if we're right. But check out that head. That head's got that classic vanilla cream kind of rubbed out look on it but it's really amazing the contrast and just the pattern of this animal. The Orange Dream is doing a lot to bring in those kind of rusty colors there on top. Just an amazing, amazing animal. All right guys, so we have a really unique animal here. This is an ivory. As you can see, it's basically a white snake, black eyes, gorgeous, but this has so much hidden potential in it. And you know, like your math teacher always told you, you gotta show your work. So I drew out here what the options of this snake, what the options were from the pairing. Okay, so the pairing was a Pompeii, which as you guys know, we announced the, the genetics on it. It's black pastel, red striped, yellow belly, spot nose clown, just a whole bunch of stuff. We bred the Pompeii to a red stripe yellow belly. So I'm thinking, hey, we can get some super red stripe combos that are gonna be 100% clown, plus I have a whole bunch of other genes in them. I did know that we had a chance for making ivories, but I thought, ah, oh, probably get one in four ivories. We didn't get one in four ivories. That's how it goes. Whenever you have a gene you don't want to hit, that's, that's always the one that uh, ends up hitting on all the snakes. So we have a really cool ivory here from this pairing. But what I think is fascinating is how you um, articulate the possibilities of this animal. So we have an ivory. We know it's a white snake, so we can't see too much in it. Um, there is some manipulation you can make of ivories to kind of get to know a little bit of a guess what's in them. But just based on the fact that it's an ivory, we know that it is has a 25% chance of being a super red stripe, okay? It has a 75% chance of be, at least being a red stripe of some sort. It has a 50% chance of being a black pastel, a 50% chance of being a spot nose. Um, so there's a lot of different things in here. And how do you even like really articulate that? Because we're used to talking about percentages when it comes to possible hets on the recessives. But as we talked about before, recessives and codoms are actually very, very similar in how they work. And so because we cannot see the codoms in here, we start using percentages to talk about codoms. So we have an ivory, 50% black pastel. She wants to bite me now. This is how dare you define me. 50% black pastel, 75% red stripe, 25% super red stripe, and 50% spot nose, all in a white snake. This is a genetic powerhouse and a really cool girl to grow up and find out what she actually has under her paint job. It'll be pretty interesting. And all of that comes from this. All right, guys, hope you enjoyed that and get, catch you up on a little bit what we're doing this season, how things are looking. We got into the weeds a little bit on some of those morphs as well, but I hope you guys really kind of wrapped your mind around it. And it's really cool when you start to figure out how all these morphs interact. And uh, I don't know, I'm just, I'm just rambling this Oh my out. goodness, you've lost your spark. Guys, hope you enjoyed that. I'm doing the chase thing. You, got, you like to do that. 
Guys, hope you enjoyed that. We had a lot of fun breaking those down. I hope you enjoyed how complicated and yet kind of really elegant all these genetics are when they come together and they work out to making a really amazing snake. Now we do have one more thing. We're really excited because Tinley Park, we have done something that you guys have been asking for, I don't know, probably five years or more. Almost every, every time we go to a show, people ask, do you guys have posters? And so this week at Tinley, the answer is yes, yes we do. We have made the JKR's Bright Side and the JKR Goes Dark posters, and we have 100% more animals on them compared to the postcards. So we have a lot of really, really, really cool morphs. These are the best 2018s. That's the bright side. I'm gonna show you the dark side poster. So you guys come and get these at the show. We're actually gonna make them online. As soon as this video airs, they'll be available online. If you're not gonna make the show, you can go ahead and order them. But come pick up a copy of the show. We'd be happy, happy to uh, get one of these on your wall. We'd be just be thrilled, be honored to be part of your snake room. Guys, thanks for watching. We can't wait to see a bunch of you at Tinley. Have a great week.